women cannot women cannot look up to me. I keep I'm saying a quote that I I came up with that everybody is throwing out right now. A woman cannot look up to a man who is her equal. You have to be better than your wife, your girlfriend. You have to have a world into which she wants to enter into. That's the basis of frame, right? So, boy, I'm going to give you guys some good game advice here, maybe. Um, such as it is. Uh, let's not call it advice. Let's call it uh, observations. Here's some data. Women have a instinctual need to look up to a guy, to look for a dominant man, to look for a guy who can protect, provide, and be parentally invested. Right? That's the beta buck side of hypergamy. Alpha fucks, beta bucks. So the long-term security side and the, uh, the short-term sexual side. Short-term sexual genetic benefits versus long-term security benefits, protection, provisioning, and parental investment. And when that woman is, oh, oh, I think it was Mystery. Yeah, it was Mystery who said this. Gosh, I should go dig that up. I know there's a video for this. Uh, he said this at one point. He said, oh, and I put this, by the way, in, in the player's handbook. I quoted him. A woman cannot fall in love with a man unless she feels some kind of jealousy. She has to feel jealousy for that guy before she will allow herself to make an emotional investment in that guy. If she's not feeling jealous, if she doesn't care to be jealous about you. Jealousy implies that there for women, especially jealousy implies that a woman has a personal investment an emotional investment in a guy. What that's based on is really kind of up to her, but usually it's provisioning protection and parental investment, right? Is he the best I can do? If she, even while she's trying to figure that out, if you look like better than all of her other options, then yeah, the answer to that is pretty much yes, at least in the, in the, in, in this context, in the now it is. So she has to feel a little bit of jealousy before she can actually fall in love with you. Meaning she has to be fearful to some degree, dread, right? Passive dread. I'm not saying active dread. She has to be fearful of losing you, losing the investment of you. That's why when guys get into a, like when I say, uh, what is it? The iron rule of Tomasi number three. If a woman, like any woman who makes you wait for sex, the sex is never worth the wait. Well, why does Rolo say that? Does he want us to fuck random boat, you know, bitches? No, because it, that, that rule is not about go out and hedonistically fuck anything on two legs. It's about determining genuine desire. Because if that woman does not have 100% interest level in you, if that woman does not have genuine burning desire, thank you fresh for bringing that one up. Own your soul. If she doesn't have a direct influence or an interest in you so, that is so intense that she feels jealousy. If it seems like some other bitch is trying to get you, then you're then something is in there that's mitigating that and the sex that you're going to, I, I put it in sexual terms, but the sex or the reward that you're going to get is going to be a mitigated reward. I don't know if I make myself clear on this well enough, but like a woman has to feel some sort you want to call insecurity, dread or jealousy or anxiety. We've talked about the competition anxiety or an urgency. If a woman is not feeling those for you, she's never going to get to the, she has to go through those stages or one of those stages before she can emotionally invest in you with what we call love. She has to want to be with you. She has to have the genuine desire to want to fuck you. She has to have the genuine desire to want to fall in love with you. And that is based on what? It's based on hypergamy. You either got to be the best, hottest piece. Of, you got to be the hot guy in the foam cannon party, or you've got to be the guy who, and preferably both of these, but the guy who is the best that she can do with long-term security, provisioning, protection, and parental investment. And if you can be the, both of those, the, and you can answer the hypergamous doubt question, which is, is he the best I can do? She's got to feel some sort of jealousy or some sort of fear of losing you, some sort of dread. And it can't be something that you generate yourself. It has to be something that's third party or it has to be initiated on her, by her imagination or by something that's confirmed for her in the environment. Social proof, pre-selection. You want to pre-selection, you know, uh, Mike Sartain talks about pre-selection all the time. And how it's it's a very useful form of game is pre-selection. And he's right. Uh, I I think it's very important. I don't think it's the only thing. I don't think he would say it's the only thing either. But um, but pre-selection is based on what? It's based on other people wanting other being the guy that other men want to be and other women want to fuck. Other men want to be social proof. Other women want to fuck pre-selection. 
And so if a woman is not saying other guy, other guys want to be this dude, they look up to him. They respect him. They admire him. They think he's a swell fucking guy, right? They want him in the foxhole next to him in, you know, crisis situation. They depend on him. He's, 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 he's a good dude. He, he's so she's pro social. Doesn't necessarily have to be introvert, extroverted, but maybe he's, uh, you know, uh, outgoing enough to make friends. He's well liked. He's well respected. He's established. He loves his mama, whatever. But he's also a hot guy. He's also goes to the gym, works out. He looks good and like kind of like the guy I want to fuck with. That that's that's one set of of criteria. The other set of criteria is: Do other bitches want to fuck this guy? And if the answer is like a resounding, you know, unequivocal yes. She's going to feel jealousy at some point. She's going to feel anxiety. She's going to feel urgency. She's going to want to do things for it. She's going to want to act right because she sees your intrinsic value. And that's really the basis, I think, of, or it should be anyways, it should be the basis of shows like whatever podcast. Brian, if you're watching, pay attention. It should be the basis, certainly, of Access Vegas. It should be the basis of Fresh and Fit. Any sh any show that is holding women accountable, one of the things I think it should be a prerequisite or a requirement of those shows is to at least, if you're going to hold women accountable, do them the favor of telling them why they're in error for what they why they think. And the easiest the, the easiest way I've found to do this is like to use like say the delusional calculator. Like what is it? Uh, you know, this is the kind of guy you want to get. And, you know, put in. Okay, I want a guy with six foot one. He's got. We just saw right the, all those girls in that in that previous video. Like he's got to have five hundred thousand dollars at least or three hundred thousand dollars. And I think what's ironic is like the the video that I put on before that where the guy was discussing the differences between buying a house in nineteen eighty three versus buying a house in two, uh, 2023. And you look at the pro. You look at the inflation differential. You want to know why those milfs are living at home and everything? It's like, because they're fucked. And you want to know why women like want to fuck these guys? They want to have anything to do with them? Because those women are still are still basing their, their desire or they're basing what is going to be an acceptable, eligible bachelor based on 1983 dynamics based on here's I want. I want the guy who can do all this. I want the guy who's successful and can do all this great shit. In 1985, back to the future. In 2023, that's that's the mismatch, the genetic mismatch is definitely the economic mismatch. Our ideals for a ideal relationship are rooted in the 20th century. That's old order way of thinking. So when women say, oh, I want a guy who makes five hundred thousand dollars, he's got to have this. They're not thinking about housing prices. They're just thinking of lifestyle because women don't marry a man. They marry a lifestyle. It's the marriage situation. But if you want a woman to act right, you've got to be at least one step above her in sexual market value. Preferably two. Actually, the healthiest relationship is when that guy's about one and a half to two steps above her. And in some cases, like for instance, a guy could be, you know, she's a six, right? Well, she's a seven. Well, let's give her some credit. She's a seven. And the guy's a seven and a half or maybe an eight. Or maybe he's a seven too, but he brings a lot to the table. So she's going to stick with him and see if she can build a life with him. As she ages, maybe she drops to a six and a half. And so now that, that differential makes her act differently. So when women, when men say, well, you know, when I got married, you know, she looked like this and oh man, she was so into it. And now I lost frame. They think they lost frame when in fact they didn't lose frame. This is their woman lost value. And so they're like, you know, now I have done so much for myself. I'm finally hitting my stride at 36, 37, 38 years old. And she's like, not what she used to be kind of thing. Now, hopefully the guy gets wife goggles or, or maybe he has some sort of other investment. You want to know why women want to get trap guys with babies. It's because women want to trap guys with babies because they know that their sexual market value is decaying. Keep that guy around. It's an insurance policy. I hate that it is, but today having children is an insurance policy. The guy who's, the guy on this side of the of the picture right here in the, the, the pregnancy test, you could say, oh, this is a flex. No, that's her insurance policy because that's insurance to keep you around. And if you believe it, that's even that much better. If you gaslit yourself into thinking that that's a flex by doing what everybody since, I don't know, we crawled out of the ocean has been doing. OK, it's a flex. And I'll tell you, the, we'll, we'll we'll come back to why that's a flex here, but uh, I got, I got really, we're all, okay. So we're at the two hour mark now. I got to get busy. 